We all know that the weapons in Black Ops 4 Zombies are lackluster at best. They just are. One class specifically falls quite below a lot of the other classes, and that is the SMGs. It's not that they're inherently bad, it's just that the way this game's mechanics work, and once these guns make it to round 29, the game basically just sucks away any damage remaining it may have, except maybe one or two weapons. So that means, of course, I'm going to be attempting to get to it as high a round as possible, mainly round 50, using nothing but SMGs, all whilst playing 9. Choosing 9 for a challenge like this may seem like an odd choice, especially considering the sheer amount of special enemies the Chaos Story has, but it was all in good reason. You see, in the undercarriage of the map, there is three SMGs on the wall, the MX-9, Spitfire, and the GKS, meaning when you train around down there, you have instant access to all of the ammo you'll ever need. Now, if I were to run Mule Kick, then ammo would literally never be a problem, but I despise that perk, so Bandelier Bandit will be taking its place. I'm also running Stamina Up, Quick Revive, and Winter's Well, just basically my standard go-to setup at this point. Luckily as well, Black Ops 4 allows us to spawn in with an SMG. Unfortunately, that gun is the Sorg, which I know isn't the worst gun in the world, but after my round 50 attempt with it, I kinda hate it. First few rounds, I spent grinding points, which is usually the last thing I want to do on this map, as I tend to focus on the Pack-a-Punch champions, like, immediately. But, not today. Beginning of round 3 is when I finally head up to get the first fight underway, which goes horribly. <laughs> for the first fight, I had the dual boss zombies, using the Sorg for this, um, was less than desirable, because it did absolutely F all. Like, I must have shot the Marauder over a hundred times, and he just laughs it off. I, of course, panic at this point, getting myself trapped, and I take a super early down on round three. <laughs> um, and things only get worse from here. I end up running out of crayons to shoot at the enemies, which means I have to go and buy the S Cargo. A gun so bad, it's literally named after snails. Uh, dead snails, in fact, because it's named after a food dish. Like... Come on, <laughs> like what, what is this? Eventually, however, Frenchie manages to somehow keep me alive and kill both the special enemies. Uh, I didn't manage to keep my sanity alive though. From here, I headed down to Danu and began working on her champion, which was the Destroyer. This was also a ball ache because I was once again using the goddamn escargo uh, to kill this guy. A gun that has been named as one of the worst guns to ever grace Call of Duty Zombies. And it's the only thing I have to even have a chance of staying alive. Uh, this challenge uh, might have been a bit of a mistake, huh? Many bullets later, however, the escargo finally takes down the destroyer. I end the round and now I have a little over 5,000 points. So I leg it downstairs and swap out the snail gun for the MX-9. And now we have something that is actually capable of killing zombies with a little bit of ease. What I wasn't accounting for was how easily the zombies could still kill me, and on round 8, I end up taking another down. And it's not over there, as once I get revived, I have no other option other to try and fight my way out of the death trap I'd gotten myself into, and I end up taking my final down just a couple of seconds later. Uh, I honestly can't believe I took three full downs before the end of round 8. Uh, that might actually be one of the worst attempts I've had since that fabled moon run. So with that now out there, there was only one thing left to do really, and that was to run it back. This time I didn't bother waiting around for points, I cleared out the first round of enemies and then headed up to the first champion. This time on round 2, the Sorg does a much better job at taking down the destroyer. I clear out the remaining enemies and then pick myself up the S Cargo once again, as I was running low on ammo. The Danu champion was up next, which was a singular Marauder, and with the extra help from an insta-kill, he goes down pretty easily. With the second champion down and a nice bit of cheddar in my pocket, the next thing to do was to buy the MX-9. So we clear out the rest of round 4, and at the beginning of the following round, we grabbed ourselves the MX-9. My goal for this run was to get pack punch open as quickly quickly as possible, which was reinforced even more as in round 6, I end up taking a really dumb down. Uh, now I'm not gonna lie, I looked at my other monitor here just to make sure I was actually recording, and uh, well, they got me killed, which is probably the most me thing I could do. And with this down on the board, pack a was now a must, meaning perks and any other guns from here on weren't even a thought. Well, except for Bandelier Bandit, as those extra bullets are quite nice. After my down, I got the next two champions taken care of on round 6, and before activating the Pack-a-Punch, I bought Bandelier Bandit as before mentioned. And on the same round, just before I headed down to Pack-a-Punch, I also got the shield built. With Pack-a-Punch now active, there was only one weapon 
weapon that I was going to be getting upgraded first, and that was the sword. Mainly because I had the operator mod running and having a pack a punch dual wield gun is just too good to pass up, especially early game. During round 11, I managed to get the sword fully upgraded, and I won't lie, having a gun fully juiced this early is just straight up unfair. The zombies quite literally don't stand a chance, which was made very apparent the following round, which was a boss round, and it just tore through the destroyers as if they were nothing. On round 14, after just obliterating everything the following round, I also got the MX-9's first upgrade. And shortly later on round 16, it too was fully upgraded. Early game, both of these guns are just ridiculous. So ridiculous, in fact, it wasn't until the end of round 18 where I realized I didn't even have my perks. I was still only running Bandolier Bandit. But end of round 18, I bought my remaining perks and just went to town. <laughs> With two maxed out guns and a full setup of perks, the next round was a breeze. The MX-9 made no problem of just tearing through any and every zombie that approached me, and the Sorg was still just annihilating every boss zombie. Things were looking very good. That was until the end of the round where I ran out of ammo, and I decided that keeping a hold of the Sorg might not be the best idea, as its war by is located in a bit of an awkward area, and by awkward area I mean at the bottom of the Danu Temple, and I'm too lazy to keep going in and out of that room every round, so I swapped it out for the Spitfire, as that gun is also located on my training path. With the Spitfire bought and upgraded a few rounds later, we continued grinding out the rounds, and I gotta say, the Spitfire is kind of insane. There is like seven good guns in this game, and the Spitfire is definitely one of them. This gun was just blitzing zombies. It didn't matter if they were regular zombies, special zombies, or even being affected by the purifier zombies. It just killed everything. It kept this up all the way up to round 30 as well. Unfortunately, I can't really say the same thing about the MX-9. Don't get me wrong, it was okay at this round, but the Spitfire was just miles above it. Annoyingly, as I was about the cross into the 30s, I end up taking my second down. I honestly don't really know what happened here. I'm shooting into a horde of zombies. I do get hit by a tiger, but it only takes my health down to 160, and then all of a sudden, I'm just dead. <laughs> my only explanation here is that I got given the ultimate wombo combo and the game just wanted me dead. Upon reviving, we crossed into the 30s and this is where things started getting tough. Uh, the damage drop off from here was pretty damn strong. It also didn't help that each round there was half a dozen purify zombies just turning each regular zombie into a walking tank. You know the old conversation of Cold War needing double tap? Well, you were all talking about the wrong game because it was definitely Black Ops 4 that needed it because once you cross a certain round milestone, uh, these guns just turn off and it was about that time for me. In fact, it got to the point where I even switched out the MX-9 for the Cordite, just to try something new to see if it'd be more worth using than the MX-9. Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> I basically swapped the MX-9 out for the exact same gun, just this time it had a bigger magazine. Everything else was near identical. I did manage to crawl my way through a few more rounds, however, but things were beginning to get too much for the small blasty boys. And around 34, everything comes crumbling down. I get myself into a pretty hairy situation around the pit, and just as I think I've escaped, I go to throw down a wraith fire, only to then see that I don't have one and there's a zombie right in front of me, which I also don't see, and before I know it, it's game over. Now I would usually say I'd run it back, but let's be honest, these guns aren't going to get me much further on 9. And with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next one.